Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I am here to do the Hamlet book tag. This tag was created by Allie from Allie and Books, and she was also the one who tagged me, so I will link her original video down below. She is so wonderful, you guys should definitely check her out. Now as you guys know, I absolutely love Shakespeare, and as you may not know, Hamlet is actually tied for my favorite Shakespeare play. So I was so excited when Allie tagged me in this, and let's get into the questions. Question number one is Hamlet. Name a book with an unlikable main character. And I'm going with Asking For It by Louise O'Neill. Now, as I mentioned in the wrap-up when I talked about this book, I think the fact that the main character is so unlikable is an intrinsic part of the book and the story and what makes it so powerful. This book follows our main character Emma O'Donovan who is kind of the classic beautiful party girl. Everyone loves her, everyone wants to be her and to be her friend. And then one night she turns up on her parents doorstep and she is bleeding and broken and she's been horribly raped during the previous night's party and events. And this book really follows the aftermath of that event and basically how her sexual assault becomes this media sensation and people all over the world are taking sides and kind of weighing in on whether or not Emma deserved what she what she got and that's why I think it's so important that Emma is such a an incredibly unlikable protagonist because like she's she's mean to people she's cruel she can be so unfeeling to people who care about her she has so many character flaws and none of that means that she deserves what happened to her. Like, I think that's such an important part of this book. I think Louise O'Neill did that very deliberately when she was creating Emma's character. And I think that this whole book is just such a, a powerful argument for the fact that nobody deserves that kind of thing to happen to them. Question number two is Gertrude. Name a book with a living parent or parents. This is actually really difficult in a lot of fiction, but I'm going with Red Leaves by Sita Brahmachari. This is a book about three different children and how their lives sort of interconnect through the way they find this wood. And family is an incredibly important part of this book. One of our main characters, Zach, is biracial and his relationship with his father and mother is very complicated. Because for one thing, his mother is a war zone reporter and he never knows if the last time he sees her is gonna be the last time he ever sees her. And there's just, there's so much going on with his family life and his, his relationship with his parents. But I think they are such strong characters and strong influences. Even Zack's mother, who is like, for the most part, kind of an off-page character. It's such a feeling for who she is and how Zack relates to her. And then another thing about this book that I really love is one of our main characters, Aisha. She lives with a foster family, a foster mother, and her foster mother loves her so much. Like, and I think this is such a powerful argument for the fact that adopted families and found families are true families, you know? Like, Aisha is just as much this woman's daughter as anybody's birth mother. And I think that that is such an important thing to read in books, and especially for books with younger characters, you know, so kids can kind of see that relationship and see it celebrated rather than feeling like kind of a second place almost to living with your birth parents and this is just such a fantastic book and I highly recommend it. Question number three is Claudius. Name a book with an unlikely villain. My answer for this one is Furthermore by Tahara Mafi and I picked this book because the villain of this story in my opinion is actually a place like it's the entire world of Furthermore which is sort of this it's like dark whimsy almost. It's like this very magical, beautiful, strange, and wonderful world, but the dark side of that. And I think Tahara Mafi does such a great job kind of building that world, and we get to see these characters like interact with it and try to survive. And even though there are characters along the way who you're kind of trying to figure out, are they on our main characters' sides, or are they, are they the villains, you know, are they against them? I really feel like the strongest antagonist in this book is the entire world of Furthermore itself, and I think that's so cool. Question number four is King Hamlet. Name a book that has a ghost slash apparition or any character from beyond the grave. And my answer for this one is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. And the title character of this novel, Rebecca, she is, like, you, your whole sense of who she is is through other people's memories and other people's, like, dialogue about her. And I think that Daphne du Maurier did such an incredible job crafting a character like second hand like that because she feels like such a real presence in the story. She absolutely like permeates the entire book and she at this point has died. Like she's not alive for any of the events of the book but you definitely feel like she's a strong element in the story and she's definitely a fully realized character. And I think that's so impressive that De Maurier was able to do that with somebody who you never, you never really see her. Question number five is Ophelia. Name a book with a female character who deserved better. 
And oh my god, you guys, my favorite question. I I have some thoughts on this topic. And the answer I went with is from The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. And I am talking about Isabel. If you guys have read this book, do you remember Isabel? I don't blame you if you don't, because frankly, even the author seemed to kind of not think she was important. But Isabel is sort of set up as like the romantic false lead for Marco, because you know from the back of the book that Marco and Celia are going to fall in love, that like that's going to be an important thing in the book. So when Isabel and Marco start this relationship, you know it's going to end badly in one way or another. But I really, really loved all of the scenes with Isabel, like from her introduction to the last time we see her in the book, it's like every time she's on the page. I wanted to know more about her. I wish she had a bigger role in this book. I just think she's so interesting and she's so underrated. Like, I think her her strength is so underappreciated by the characters in this book. Like, she's so smart and she's really, she's doing the best she can to kind of hold these situations together, to kind of like make the best of things. And nobody appreciates her for that. I mean, I guess sometimes they're actually unaware of all that she's doing to help them, but I just, I love Isabel so much and I just wish that we had gotten more of her or that she had gotten, like, that she, she really did deserve better. Like, I just wish that she had gotten something. Something. Question number six is Laertes. Name a book with a strong sibling relationship. And I'm actually going with Sun and Moon, Ice and Snow by Jessica Day George. Now, if you guys saw my last wrap up, I will link that down below in case you haven't yet. But I, I had a lot of mixed feelings about this one. But one of the things that I did really love were the characterizations in general, and especially the relationship between our main character and her oldest brother. But the Lass and her brother Hans Peter have just such a wonderful sibling relationship and friendship, and he really, he makes the effort to take care of her, especially because her mother especially doesn't really take care of her, very, or doesn't care about her very much at all, and just their relationship is just such a highlight of this book. I really believed their kind of teasing way they talk to each other, but also this really deep love they have for each other, and that is something that I really enjoyed about this book, even if some of the other elements were not my favorite. Number seven is Polonius. Name a book with a controlling father or father figure. And I'm going with The Young Elites Trilogy by Marie Lu. In this book, Adelina's father is not only controlling, he is actually abusive. So definitely a trigger warning for that, for this book. But seeing her, like, kind of come into her own strength and power and really, like, fight back and teach him a lesson is just such such a good part of this book and I think that the fact that this whole series, this trilogy is kind of marketed and written as kind of a villain origin story, it's so important at the beginning of this story to see why Adelina is making the choices she does. Like even when she's doing bad things, if you as the reader can understand or empathize with why she's doing them, I think that really helps kind of buy into this whole like villain protagonist thing and the fact that one of the characters she does this to is her horrible abusive father. I think that's a big component of why I enjoyed this novel. I know it's kind of polarizing, some people really don't like Adelina. I find her a really likable, unlikable character, especially in the first and third book, so definitely recommend this series. Number seven is Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Name a book with a strong friendship. And my answer for this one is Dragon Slippers by Jessica Day George. Just realized I have two Jessica Day George books in this tag, but that's fine. And this is actually a trilogy. I still have to read the third book, but I am really enjoying these so far. And the friendship I'm talking about is between our main character, Creel, and her best friend, Marta. And in both the first book and the second book, I just, I love the way that their relationship is written and just the way they interact with each other. The fact that they support each other and they tease each other and they also kind of pull each other back from making bad choices because, you know, that's one of the important things that friends should do. And I just, I just love all of their interactions so much. The female friendships in these books are just amazing. They're so well done. And even though not every female character is a good person, like is somebody that you want to see succeed in these books, it's still like, I think there's still so much evidence of girls helping each other and supporting each other and getting along. And Creel and Marta are just such a good example of that. And they're not the only ones. There are other female friendships in this book as well. And finally, question number nine is Horatio. Name a book where you changed your opinion about a character or the book itself. And this is actually something I talked about recently, and that is Raisa from the Seven Realms series by Senda Williams Chima. This is the second book, The Exiled Queen, and this is really when I started to change my perspective on Raisa as a character. Because, oh my gosh, this girl is just... She, she's so 
strong and brilliant and wonderful. I just love her so much. I think that all of her decisions, I can see why she makes them. And that is such an important thing for me with characters, I know, for a lot of people. Because even if, like, you want, you want your characters to have flaws, but you don't want them to make stupid decisions just just to like mix up the plot I guess and Raisa never does that like she's doing the best she can in an incredibly stressful situation she's like coming into her own as a leader and just everything she does like every conversation she has with people I just like want to stand up and cheer for her because everything she says is just like so good and I was talking to Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing because she really loves the series and Aoife mentioned one of the scenes, one of the scenes in the third book where she looks around she's like, hey, uh, why aren't there any women on my council? And everybody's kind of like, um, I don't know, you know, that's just not how things are, blah blah blah. And she's like, yeah, well, we're gonna change that, so uh, next time I expect more women. Like, bye. Raisa, out. It's, it's just everything. I love her. If you guys have not started this series, it's it's so good. Even if you don't like her in the first book, because I really thought she was spoiled and just really frustrating and kind of a cookie cutter standard like princess trope, and she's so not. She gets so much better, she grows so much, and like I could I could gush about her all day, but Risa man. Okay everybody, so that was the Hamlet book tag. Thank you again, Ali, so much for tagging me and for creating such a wonderful Shakespeare themed tag. Makes my heart so happy. I'm going to tag Trisha from Tell Her a Story and Amy from Blonde and Bookish because they are two of my, my fellow Shakespeare gals. And of course, anybody else who sees this video and who wants to do it, you don't have to be a Hamlet expert to do this tag. You don't even have to be a, like a Shakespeare fan to do this tag. The questions are just really fun and interesting. And if in the future that kind of leads you to dip your toe into Shakespeare and to maybe try some of his plays, then of course that's all the better, but it, you, it's really not a prerequisite, I promise you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!